Okay, so this is Android 15 running on a Raspberry Pi 5. There is also a version for the Raspberry Pi 4. So this tutorial is going to show you how to install it on either an NVMe, USB or an SD card. And also, only recently have I managed to get the Google Play Store working. So this means all the Google services are installed. Now you don't have to install that, so you can still use this tutorial. Just skip the Google bit if you don't want them. But I know a lot of people still use them as well. So let's just have a quick look. Uh, so YouTube now works. I can't play much of it, so I won't. And we also have the Google Play Store. And so I can install apps and games from there and all my purchases and everything else shows up. And I've downloaded Combat Master, which I haven't tried before, but it seems to have pretty good reviews. It's pretty good. It looks decent, the sound is good as well. Oh. Oh. Jump right into my gun. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty decent. So let's quit out of that. And I'll shut this down and do the tutorial from the beginning. So I've got my version of KDE Plasma in here uh, on an NVMe drive which is freely available to download. I've got separate videos on that. And let's grab an SD card. So I've got my Axe here, which was one of the cheapest ones I could find, but actually performance was pretty good in a recent video. So let's pop that in. So let's open up a web browser and do a search for Constacang and just click on any of these. And on the right hand side, pick either I mean, there is Raspberry Pi 3 as well, but not for the latest version, but 4 and 5, so I'm going to click on 5. I'm going to click on this version, AOSP Constacang Android 15, and scroll down. There is a way of updating. I did try the update on 14, but it lost the Play Store, so I'm going to do a fresh install, which is this one. And we're going to find the download, which I think is this one, free access. Yeah, I'm not a robot. And start download. Let's just check. Yeah, that's downloading. And that's finished downloading. So let's close the web browser down and we want to launch Raspberry Pi Imager. So choose OS, scroll all the way to the bottom, click use custom. And then this is the image we just downloaded. Choose storage. And this is the 64 gig Axe SD card. Hit next. No customization because it breaks things. And uh, yes. And then just pop your password in. And that's finished downloading. So let's close the web browser down and we want to launch Raspberry Pi Imager. So choose OS, scroll all the way to the bottom, click use custom. And then this is the image we just downloaded. Choose storage. And this is the 64 gig Axe SD card. Hit next. No customization because it breaks things. And uh, yes. And then just pop your password in. Okay, so the message on screen says it's all completed, so I can shut all this down. And we'll boot Android for the first time. So I've still got the NVMe in here, but it doesn't matter because the priority is to boot from SD card. Uh, so it's going to boot from the Android SD card. And that's starting up Android. So it's booted up, but the first thing we're going to do is shut it down. So if I get my mouse pointer top left and drag it down, you've got a power button here and power off. And I'm going to take the SD card out, or at least just slightly eject it, and then power on again, because I'm going to boot back into Linux from the NVMe drive. There we go. So now I'm going to press the Windows key and start typing disks. And you can see KDE Partition Manager comes up. I often use Gparted for this, but I found KDE Partition Manager works with also the Mterio version of Android, so I've started using this. But yeah, both seem to work with Constacang's version. So put your password in. Now I can pop the Android SD card in. And if I hit Refresh Devices, you can see that I've got two drives now. So this is the SD card. I can tell by the size because it's 64 gig. And we need to pick the last partition, which is this one, and then right click it and resize. 
and then we need to drag it all the way to the right. This is so we're using all the available space on the SD card. Hit OK and apply. And apply pending operations. Okay, that's all done. So you can see now we've got these partitions that Android creates and this is the one where all of the games and the apps and everything else is stored. At this stage, if you want to boot from anything other than SD card, you need to go into the file system and locate the boot folder. So this is the Android boot folder and we've got config.txt and you need to change the boot device. So you can see here, uh, it's currently selected as SD card. USB and NVMe are hashed out, but basically if you wanted it to be NVMe, then you would hash out the SD card and you would delete the one before NVMe and then save that. But I'm not going to save that because I'm on SD card. So let's close this down. Now we need to download the Aptide store, so open your browser and type in Aptide and let's click on this first link and at the top here we've got download and download here in the middle. Okay, so that's just finished downloading. I think the easiest next step is to put a USB stick in, so let's pop that in. Generally needs to be FAT32 formatted for Android. And I can open that up. So this is my USB stick. You just need a folder you can recognize or you could just put it in the root. I've obviously got loads of other things on here at the moment. So I need to get a downloads. So if I open that in another window, I can then copy that over. I'll just copy it to the root. So basically on the, uh, the first layer of the USB stick. And boot up from the SD card again. So let's switch that on. It's going to ignore the NVMe drive that's in there. Okay, so now if we press the Windows key on our keyboard, uh, we can get all the apps up. And I'm going to drag settings. And I'm also going to do the same with files because I use them a lot. Now in settings, we can have a look at the storage. So you can see here, 15% use, 54 gig free. If yours says only about two or three gig, then you didn't expand the partition and you'll run out of space very quickly. So we go back to home and we go to files and we need to find that USB stick which is here, mine's called RetroPie. Click on it and if it was in a folder, you'd find it in the folders here, but mine isn't. You can see I've got it here, aptide.apk. So let's double click on that and you can see, do you want to install the app? Now if it comes up with a message saying uh, you haven't got permissions, just click on the tab to allow permissions to install the app. So now we can open the app up and skip all of this. And then do a search for a web browser. So I'm going to use Edge only because I know it works, but there are obviously others you can use as long as it supports downloading. So Microsoft Edge. We can't use Chrome yet without Google services. So let's hit install and OK and allow. I don't want any notifications. Now we need to allow Aptide to install this. So we go to settings, switch this on and install. If you press the back arrow, you can see it's installing. Let's open that up. I'm happy for that to be my default browser. Now we do a search for mind the G apps Android 15 GitHub. Okay, there's the mind the G apps GitHub. And you can see there's a version for ARM 64 and this is version 15. So let's click on that. Click on releases on the right hand side here. And we need to download the zip file, this one here. And download. And while that's downloading, if we go to the home screen and click on settings, scroll down to system, and then scroll down to Raspberry Pi settings. And you can see reboot to recovery is here. Switch that on. And let's go back to the Edge browser. So if we click on the square, you can go back to whichever app you want. And that's downloaded. Drag down from the top left. Hit shut down and restart. And that's rebooted to recovery, so we can click on install. So we need to find that download. So if we click on downloads, you can see mine, the G apps is there. Click on that. Left click and swipe this to the right. 
and that'll install all the Google services. And then we can do wipe Dalvik and swipe to wipe and then reboot system. So now if I press the Windows key, I've got Google Play Store. So I can drag that to the desktop. And if I click on it and sign in, you'll see that you can't because it's not Play Protect certified. So we've got to register it. Now this has got more complicated than it used to be because you used to be able to download a device ID app. None of those seem to be working anymore. So I'm gonna use ADB, which is where you log into the Pi from another device. So let's go to settings, go to system, Raspberry Pi settings, and you can see ADB is here. So we're gonna turn that on, and we're gonna also turn on SSH. And this gives us an IP address. So this is basically my device's address on my network. So my Pi is still running connected to the internet, and I'm gonna control it with this Windows mini PC. So first of all, I've got to download and install it. So let's pick this one from Android Developers. So let's click on the download it here. And I'm using Windows, but you can see it works for Mac and Linux as well. Let's accept and download. Let's grab this. Let's go to my C drive and create a new folder. And we're going to pop that in there. Now we need to open up platform tools and copy the directory. Right click on this PC and properties. And then we click on advanced system settings, environment variables, and double click path. Click new and paste it in and click OK. Now we can minimize all this. We can press the Windows key and type in command and right click and run as administrator. I'm not sure if you need to run it as administrator, but just for this task, it'll be fine. And then cd dot dot to go back and cd space dot dot to go back again, because I can't remember the better way of doing it. Uh, so cd adb, so we're into the adb folder now. So let's grab something from the Consta Kang page and it was in the comments, which looks like it worked for someone else. So Android 15 and scroll down all the way to the comments and it was here. So ADB connect, we can do that. ADB connect 192.168.1.69. Then ADB root, and then ADB shell. And then we need to copy this bit in. So copy that, paste that in here. And that gives us an Android ID, and I've taken ages to get that. So I need to copy that, although I'm not sure if it does let me copy it from here. No, it doesn't seem to. So I'm gonna to have to type it in on the Google page. Now that Google page is also, and thanks to Gary for the tip. So if I go back up, register Google services framework. So we're gonna make use of Windows snapping in Windows. So I'm not a robot. And I've got to tap in that number. Yeah, that looks all right. So if I click register, this happens quick. Registering, device registered. Okay, so now it's the waiting game because it doesn't happen instantly. So it usually takes a few restarts and maybe half an hour to an hour or something like that. And we should be able to log into Google. So I can shut my Windows computer down now. So I've restarted and I've also turned off ADB and SSH. Where was that? System and Raspberry Pi settings. So it's safer to have these settings turned off. Let's try Google Play Store. It's only been a few minutes, so it's not gonna be ready yet. But this is basically, oh. Oh, maybe it is. Yep, it's doing a two-factor authentication. Agree to Google's terms and services and accept. And we've got the Google Play Store. So we are up and running. So it means that we can use Google, the Chrome browser, and also go into our account and access any of our previous purchases. 
But you also find that some games and apps require Google services to be enabled, otherwise they just don't work on Android. So it just means that it gives you a lot more options. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.